would say it's inspired by the human form. It's really a, a feminine form to be exact. You know, it's a really a car that we designed to be timeless and uh, at the same time be unmistakably a Viper. So yes, it's evolutionary and that was on purpose, uh, but we think it's revolutionary in the way that it, it's so beautifully sculpted and everything is functional. Every scoop, every shape, uh, the car actually creates negative lift, downforce, naturally without any wings on it. So that, that's all part of working with engineering. Well, beautiful new car, Viper, coming out, uh, what, in a few months? Yeah, in about uh, four or five months from now, we'll be, they'll be on the road. There are actually uh, several of them out there testing, so it's exciting to get the feedback from, from the uh, media world, so to speak. This is your baby. How, how much blood and soul did you pour into the design well, of this? Well, it's our baby. We have a, a, a studio of uh, some very excited designers that got to work on this car, of about four or five of us, and uh, I, I drove them nuts. So tell me about the design. Kind of walk me through what yeah. you did. I mean, uh, obviously, the, the Viper is gifted with some fantastic proportions. You have the very, very cab rearward proportion, which is... There's very few cars that still have that today, so that already gives it a special look. We widen the track. The engineers said they wanted a wider track for handling reasons. We love it because it allows us to really broaden, broaden the vehicle. So we kind of started with the inspiration of the snake, you know, the, the, between the human body and the eyes of a snake. Uh, so we really changed the, the front end of the vehicle by putting a slightly more vertical headlamp than before. Um, again, and immediately you can see functionality creeps into the design with the exhausters uh, coming out of the hood, which you also see on Grand Cherokee, 100% functional. Uh, not only does it release the pressure under the hood for high speed stability, but it really does help cooling without uh, burdening the engine bay with too much uh, heat, which would have, make us have to pull spark. Um, then you see the cab has been, you know, it's about the same height as before, but we really uh, actually increased the double bubbles, because a lot of our owners, actually more than half of them, take their cars on the track. So uh, we actually increased the headroom for helmets and whatnot, uh, com combined with the uh, lowered seat really helps. But in terms of the car's signature detail, it's got to be the gill. Uh, we've kind of, you know, the gill has changed over the years. You know, the original Viper had a very, almost a vertical gill that exited here. Uh, the, the last generation had a very geometric gill. We went back to a very, uh, very organic gill, but exaggerated even more. It's much deeper. Uh, it's also very functional, exhaust heat. Um, while we're at it, we, you know, we really, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big freak when it comes to highlighting. You know, so we really uh, uh, surface the barrel of the car to have a perfect highlight, the horizon line that goes all the way around the car that really gathers it all together. As emotional and, and as, as um, there's a lot going on in this design, but it's kind of held together by this constant highlight around the car. Again, functionality creeps in. Uh, we are able to extend the DLO of the vehicle, we call it daylight opening, uh, by using this functional uh, brakes brake duct that's embedded into the vehicle. The air goes right to the brakes. We use it as a styling element to, again, lower the roof visually and lengthen it. Again, is that real carbon fiber? Yes, it is. Uh, it'll be uh, uh, it'll be black on certain cars, and on the GTS, it'll be carbon fiber. And we're also going to offer a carbon package. Uh, a couple of things we did while we were at it, we were able to we really worked with engineers. So we added a little more negative camber this time around, what allowed us to cinch down the wheel opening. So you see less air. It really helps aero, and also looks better. Um, in the back of the vehicle, it, you know, inspired from race cars all the way back to the 50s and. Uh, even 60s and 70s, you had the cam tail. You know, the Italians did this, and this is kind of an evolution of this idea of, of the cam back, uh, which again is functional. We, this is the highest it's ever been on any Viper, uh, creating a lot of, of positive downforce. We still have a great top speed, but it's, a, it's always a, a, a balance between top speed and downforce. So this is all functional, but it looks great. It really does look very exotic. Um, and then on the back of the car, just like we did on the front, we changed the signature by incorporating some technology. So the headlamp, the tail lamps and headlamps are very high tech. These are all LEDs. It has a bit of a crushed glass effect uh, where the LEDs are diffused and it looks pretty cool. And they're surrounded uh, on some certain cars on the, on the SRT, it's body color and you can, uh, as you step up to the GTS, it comes in a carbon surround or a black surround depending on the vehicle. Uh, and underneath what you can't really see from where you are right now is a diffuser. Uh, we spent a lot of time, normally that would be kind of plunked in so to speak by the, by the engineers and uh, we kind of intercepted that process and really designed the diffuser so it's just as beautiful as anything else. So. Uh, but pretty proud of the car. I think it's, it manages to be very new and gorgeous and functional. How about the interior? Can we yeah. go look at that? Well, the interior was, um, again, first thing was ergonomics, getting the ergonomics improved. So we, we really did listen to our customers, what they wanted, a little more storage, wanted a little more comfort, more width. So we started with the door. We actually skived the door out just a little bit more to give you a little more shoulder room. Uh, we put actually a bin in here. We kind of organized the switches better. Um, but the, the true revelation is the materials themselves. I mean, we really uh, changed our philosophy from molded instrument panel to more of a handmade uh, situation. 
And we find with low volume cars, it's actually the better deal. So we're able to always wrap, the materials are always wrapped, they're always stitched. Uh, you, can, you get optional 100% leather. All IPs are leather on all the Vipers, but you get the whole interior leather on the GTS. And uh, that allows us to change up the color anytime we want. We can do uh, hundreds and hundreds of different combinations. And we'll also have a customized program where owners can just specify what they want and we'll build it for them. So it's really going to be mass customization has finally come our way. Uh, the, when you sit behind the wheel, the first thing you notice is steering wheel is, is, is smaller. It's, it's very sculpted. It has a great flat bottom, which has become a signature detail in all the SRTs. Uh, we probably spent as much time on the steering wheel as we did with the whole car. I'm a big fan of a very, you know, the, the wheel has to communicate the purpose of the car. So that, that starts there. Uh, we've also incorporated some technology. We got the 8.4 inch corporate screen in there, but it's customized for the Viper specifically with the seven inch screen in the cluster uh, with all kinds of geekdom in there. So you can figure out, you know, all oh, everything, your, your uh, transmission temperatures, your uh, a lot of stuff. You actually have G-Mapping. Yep, we're gonna yeah, have track cool. tools and it'll be able to G-Map tracks that you're at. You record it and you could go back home, download it and uh, check out your performance. Now you're race cars, right? And the old Viper um, had this reputation where, you know, you take it around the corner, it would stick, it would stick and then it'd let go. Kind of bite you. Well, we've done a lot with the handling. We actually we did uh, starting with the way the suspension is hung. We moved the tie rod forward, uh, which uh, takes away the compliance steer. That really helps a lot. Uh, but the big enabler has been the tire itself. We, we changed to a, a different tire. Went with Pirelli's in this situation. Uh, we we worked with the compound. The compound is actually unique front to back, and it allows for a much more progressive breakaway and actually even more ultimate uh, G's, which we're amazed. And normally those are mutually exclusive. Um, what size are the backs? They're 355s, the largest we ever had on a Viper. Went up 10 millimeters. The fronts are up quite a bit. They're 295s in the front. Um, so you have the uh, fundamentals that are good. We, we fixed uh, the steering effect of the rear, so the, st the rear now just goes up and down, does what it's supposed to do. It doesn't uh, jostle the car around. And overlay that with a very, very high-tech four-channel uh, stability control system. We work with Conti Tevis for over almost three years now, perfecting it. And it's a very, a really good driver will never know it's there. Make heroes out of a lot of people. Uh, so the, and you have the ability, we have four modes, you have the ability to shut it off completely or progressively shut it off. Um, so if you want to go crazy like the old Viper and hang the tail out, you can, yeah. but if you want to be a hero on the track without... Yeah, and, and, and the other thing we did is we quickened the rack, so the steering rack is, is much quicker. The whole chassis is stiffer, it's 50% stiffer, and that allows the suspension to be tuned very differently. So the whole philosophy of the car is different, it's much more go-kart-like. Yeah, when it, when it comes out, you can, you can catch a car almost instantly now with a very quick rack, so it's, it's nothing like the old car. And what are you proudest of on the new car? Ah, the teamwork. I think uh, the car is a synthesis of, uh, of a team, you know, putting their heads together and saying, oh, this is what we've always wanted to do, and we did everything we've always wanted to do. So we're very, very happy with the results. And when will it hit the dealers? When can people get in and drive one? Uh, right around Christmas time. Just in time for Christmas, uh, they should be in showrooms. <laughs>